What's going on, people? And welcome to a brand new episode of Too Many Games and Not Enough Time, where I get to speak to some incredible individuals from across the world. Now, we're on your podcast services, fam. Spotify iTunes, all of them thing there. So if you're listening over there, make sure you come over to the YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. Now, like I said in the intro, we're international. We have people from around the globe. But in today's episode, we've got someone who is really incredible. So I'm talking a esports host and producer. It met back in the days, you might have seen her doing the Diddy Bop at Revolt. Fam, she's out here champion name for diverse faces and voices in gaming. She can kick ball. I'm talking real football, not what you Americans like to call soccer. It's football, fam. She's got the dopest look in the game. The one and only Erin Ashley. Welcome to Too Many Games and Not Enough Time. Thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm good. I'm good. I, uh, you know, uh, I love the fact that you said football and not soccer, <laughs> <laughs> because it's funny. I, I've, I've played with so many international people, so I've always had to like interchange how I say it depending on who I'm talking to. So I thought that was cool. Well, it's really I'm really, really honored to have you on the show. I've been watching your journey for probably about a year and a half. I've been following you on Twitter and just just love everything that you're doing. And I love how much of a champion you are for making a, a diverse voice for us. So yeah, man, let's talk about some games. So firstly, like COVID, the world has been in the maddest crisis for the past. Feels like forever, but yeah, it's coming on to a whole year now. Um, what games you've been playing recently to just kind of for your mental health, just to kind of have some type of escapism? Well, it's interesting because I have the games that I play for different reasons. So I've been playing Hades as kind of like a chill game that I can play on my own. Um, something that's like engaging and there's still some con- there's still a level of competitiveness to it, but it's not to the point where I'm quote unquote sweaty. Then I also been playing um call of duty a lot with my friends just because it's like one of those games that just a lot of them play and it doesn't matter whether they're pc xbox or playstation it's we can all congregate together online and via discord and be able to play with each other and for me like that's kind of like a big focal point for me it's like i play a lot of games where i can play with my friends just because i can't see my friends in real life so we we all our hangout sessions are virtual now um we may play that we may play overcooked um, I was I was playing a little bit of cyberpunk as well, um, you know, obviously with all the bugs and everything going on. But I, I think for me, it's like I <laughs> it's crazy to say I play so many games for so many different reasons. And but I think the most important thing for me is to just like have that established sense of community, um, because there's also a the, one thing I have to like kind of uh, let people know is that although I work in the gaming industry, there are times where like I don't even have time to play video games. So when I can play video games, I either want it to re- to help me relax or I want it to be enjoyable with a group of people or friends or community. That is the biggest myth. People think when you work in gaming, you spend your time just gaming. And you're like, fam, yes, I get to game, but... Do you know how much other work I have to do? Like the gaming mm-hmm. part of my life is like the minimal part of my whole career. All right, so let's talk about some of them games. So <laughs> Hades is the the roguelike adventure that's just taken off. Mm-hmm. I haven't actually played it yet. Um, oh. I'm planning on getting it on my Switch. Now, I know within Hades, it's like a loop of each time you die, you get better and spawn better weapons and, and get a better bit of a story. What is it that you love about this game? Because people are going mad about it. Well, I like the the characters and the interaction you have with the characters. I like the aesthetics. I like the even just like the, the mapping of it. I also like how, to me personally, Hades is a game that for those who are very, very casual, that I think this would be a game that would be interested in playing where there's still challenges to it. Because like you said, every time you die, you upgrade and you get better. But it's there's benefits to 
you not dying, but there's also a little bit of rewards for when you do die. Because I mean, I'm the kind of person where I, I hate dying all the time in games. <laughs> like you'll never catch me playing a Dark Souls series because I just I can't stand it. Like I, I just hate the fact. It. I'm not about it either. It's like you. It's like oh, you have to die a thousand times in order to win. I'm just like. Bro, I don't have time for that. <laughs> but I do like the fact with Hades that like even if you do die, there's still an ability to get better and to upgrade your your weaponry or abilities so that you can continue to wreak havoc. Um and so I, I really enjoyed it in that capacity. And there's also like, you know, there's this story elements, and of course you have the like the Greek mythology that's incorporated into it. I'm like a I'm a big history nerd. I'm just a nerd in general. Like I love so learning. And I love Overcooked. Don't let anyone down talk Overcooked. I am about that chef life. Mm -hmm. All right. So we um, both work in esports and you do some incredible things within esports. But something that I really want to talk about is explosion of the successful Spanish streamers and mm -hmm. esports like um so i spoke about it recently on jinx tv the gref g um hitting like 2.4 million concurrent viewers which is mad like crazy mm -hmm. numbers because if you think like it took ninja and drake drake's the biggest rapper in the world ninja and they got like 660,000 concurrent views and that was like the biggest thing for years and mm -hmm. for me it's amazing because like the english language is one of one of the most spoken languages in the world, like 20% of the world speak English, um, compared to Spain, where it's like only 7.8% of the world actually speaks Spanish. Why has there been such a huge explosion in terms of Spanish and Latinx um, streamers and mm -hmm. gamers kind of coming to the forefront of lately? So what I think is, is like we, you know, I think it's just the perception of that. I think that it's perceived that they're just blowing up or just having these numbers. But actually, if you look at some of the top streamers, they are Spanish speaking streamers and they've been in the top for a while. And then on top of that, too, I think it's like, you know, double check this, but I think it's around like 40 percent of top streamers on Twitch are non speaking or sorry, non English speaking streamers. And so for me, I mean, We've seen how transformative the Spanish speaking and Latin American market is in music. We've seen that already. We've seen it with football, aka soccer. Like, so it's 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 very obvious that there's an audience that's there for it and a very engaged audience. I just think that I mean there's various reasons why we haven't really seen it entirely pick up for esports or just gaming in general. I mean, one is the advertising structure. Um, you know, the digital advertising structure is pretty archaic and it's an old system. Um, and then on top of that too, you know, um, a, a lot of the industries and a lot of, uh, I mean, most industries, you know, unfortunately, when it comes to English speaking, that's like the predominant space, right? Even the expectations of those who speak another language is that, you know, when they become professional, they have to learn English, right? It's kind of like the standard in a way. Um, but I actually encourage a lot of people, instead of like forcing everyone to fit our model, the way that we will grow is if we're able to, to build within these respective communities. And they have very engaged communities. I mean, we've seen it with the Gears of War community in, in Latin America. Um, even I spoke to my friend who works at Epic Games and he was like, you know, they've started to, to develop their, their competitive scene and just games within the Latin market. And, and they've been getting some really great um, numbers and return on investments for it. It's just sometimes it may take longer per se, um, but there is always that return on investment. I mean, we see it all the time. Like, I mean, look, you see top artists like Justin Bieber hopping on Spanish songs. And I mean, it's very clear that he's not, that's not his language that he's speaking, but he understands the power of that community. Some of the top musicians, you know, Bad Bunny can literally move the internet based off of what he says and does. Like, uh, you know, even people like Messi. And then if you look at more Portuguese speaking countries, we have so many notable soccer players in those in those spaces who are very influential. So I think it's not so much that we're, it's it's suddenly it's moving the market right now. I think it's just more so that people are paying attention a lot more because the Gref G has uh, broken records before. And so has yeah. another top Spanish speaking um, streamer called Rubias. And and this I think it's uh, another one's out on play. So those those individuals have been breaking records or have been having a, a very solid numbers i just think that 
especially because of COVID, we are more attentive to things than we were pre-COVID. So I think that's also what contributed to everyone being like, whoa, holy smokes, who is this guy? Like, I've, I've like, I have a friend who knew about him and he told me about him because obviously I'm Puerto Rican. So I like to stay in touch with those in the Latin America market. Um, but yeah, the, they were making high numbers like that even before that moment. It's just, you know, our eyes are opening up a lot more. Yeah, his numbers are doing mad things. And I love to see it. Right, so COVID, things are madness right now. So if someone who hasn't played games for a long time and they've got some more time on their hands, they're on furlough, like their thing, what game would you suggest for someone to be able to jump back? Okay, so I, I will break it down even more. I think for mobile, um, the, the Mario Kart mobile iteration, I think Mario Kart has always been one of those games that everyone can play and anyone can play. Um, for PC, I mean, Among Us has Among Us hands down. Um, we already seen people who uh, you wouldn't, I mean, they're gamers and they don't necessarily have to be quote unquote gamers, but there's, it's simple enough functions that anyone can partake in it. Um, if we're looking at console, for those who are not very much into gaming quote unquote, so I would say Fall Guys. I mean, I feel like that's a game that also doesn't have very extensive functionality um, for those. And these are for the these are for people who are like not really gamers who are trying to get into gaming. Um, I think that those are good enough games that have that sense of community and then it's those games that even their quote unquote hardcore friends play that they can partake in and not feel isolated. Um, and they're also fun in general too. So I think that those are some games now. In terms of like, if they're a little bit more quote unquote advanced, um, I mean, man, it really depends on like, it's so weird. Cause sometimes when I think about these questions, I'm like, okay, well, what, what kind of genre are they like, are they more puzzle? Are they more action adventure? <laughs> are they mo more FPS, MMO, like RPG? Like I'm just, it's my brain goes into all those, but I think I'll just leave it at those few uh those few games for the answer yeah that's that's simple enough i hate full guys with a passion like i know it's a good game and everyone loves it but it does my head in all right <laughs> before i let you go i've just got one more question for <laughs> you now um obviously social media is a big part of everyone's lives and it really helps us with our careers within um gaming and the new um, trending app is Clubhouse and everyone's kind of be on it. And I'll keep it a buck. Like I've been avoiding it like the plague. I'm like, fam, I've got too much social media in my life as it is. But um, my homegirl, um, Bunny Mike Game You, she's been getting on me about getting on it. And I see you've been doing some major things on the platform. So how do you find the platform is for um, gaming right now? Um... I mean, ultimately, it depends on like who your audience is. Like my audience is very much kind of like, I mean, I would say like in gaming, audiences are very segmented already, right? I mean, you typically will have people that would start as like maybe they're Fortnite players on on stream, variety streamers, etc. But for me, it's like mine segmented in the sense of like gamers and professionals. So. I, you know, based off of the work that I do, I'm a thought leader in this space. So not only am I speaking to the community, but I also have to speak to those who are on the business side of the community or like not in the community at all. And so how I balance it is like, I identify like, what are the platforms that I need to put eight, like 80% of my attention to, and then what's 20%, right? So I look at, you know, um, platforms where I can speak to professionals. So like LinkedIn, Clubhouse, I mean, it, even possibly Twitter Spaces, which is a functionality that's gonna be coming to some of us. Um, that's their audio um, platform within Twitter. And, um, and of, I mean, of course, Twitter is paired with that because I have that community. And so I identify like, what are the three platforms that I need to put the most attention to, three or four platforms that I need to put more, the most attention to. And then the, the other ones, I still add stuff to it, but it's, it's like 20%, right? Because it's always important to still find ways to um, put your content and put experiences on each platform, but you put more energy into where your community resonates while you can also build an audience in the other platforms. So I definitely upped Clubhouse a bit more, 
But then at the same time, I also think about, okay, what, what are the monetization opportunities on that platform? So that also helps me with evaluating like how much time I spend on certain things and certain clubs and certain spaces. Um, because also as a content creator, like people have to understand like free never actually just means free. <laughs> um, there's always something that comes from it. Um, and especially when you have information, yes, it's important to give out free information, but I also am a firm believer that not everything needs to be freemium. <laughs> um, and so it's like having that balance, right? Because it's funny because I mean, and I mean, this kind of a little bit of a shift from the conversation with the platform, but I think that what people have to understand is you have to give everyone a taste of your knowledge and information first or whatever value you have first before you can even think of charging it. And so that's why I give, I mean, and that plus the fact that like, I understand that there's certain um, accessibility problems in the industry when it comes to knowledge and information. That's also why I take the time to share because I also, I'm a firm believer that like, if you help, when you help others grow and you're genuine about it, you know, you'll get, um, how do you say? You know, good things happen to good good people. And I know yeah. some people don't agree with that, but I, I personally believe in that. I believe in karma and I, I'm, and I believe in good energy that comes back. And so um, it's always having that fine balance, but at the end of the day, it just ends, it starts with like the boundaries that you personally set, where you're, whether they're per personal or professional boundaries and figuring out ways and spaces you can help people and find ways that you can monetize your value and your skill set and also do it all while you're not impacting your well-being your health and so i'm very big on that so if you can get on clubhouse i would say you could do that as your 20 percent. you should be on clubhouse um but if you already have other platforms that are like your main sources i wouldn't stress too much but i do i, I agree with bunny you, you should get on there now and then though <laughs> I, I fully I fully like what you're saying about obviously putting out good energy and 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 to be able to receive it because I think the thing that I love about the gaming industry especially coming from the music industry is I feel like people are very welcoming and want to help where music is the complete opposite. Erin thank you so much for giving me your time today. Um, too many games we're only a short podcast i could speak to you all day um where can the people find you if they want to get involved in your journey oh if you can follow me i have everything as aaron a simon on your on my url my website social media like pretty much everything is that you can also look me up aaron ash simon you can find everything because that's what i go as in the industry i mean it's my name but i literally go as my whole name for uh, work purposes and yeah, you'll be able to catch up with what projects I'm on and just other additional announcements. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thank you for all checking it out. You see, she was giving you bare advice, fam. Bare things for you to listen to and implement into your life. Now, I've been Mr. Midas. She's been Erin. You've been excellent. And we out. Peace. <laughs>